The ability to play close to 20,000 old console games from a small HDMI stick is tempting indeed. This is made possible by the inclusion of game ROMs that the manufacturer places on the removable 64GB microSD memory card. And the premise is quite simple, just plug the game stick into any HDMI port on your TV or monitor and play. In today's video we'll take a look at the M8 and see what it can do. It costs around $16 and the link is in the description for anyone interested. It's important to note that although it's advertised as a 4K device, this refers to the video output capacity, and not necessarily the native resolution of the emulated games which are from older systems. This device, known by many names, is one of many game sticks available on the market. With so many similar products out there, it can be challenging to differentiate between them. However, the GameStick 4K Lite, which is being represented here as the M8 here, aims to solve some of the problems faced by its predecessors and provide a complete gaming experience. Let's take a look at the specifications and see if it performs to its limits. Supposedly it comes with a professional gaming chip, classic connected TV games and a dual rocker control. The naming of these devices may be quite creative, but at the end of the day, they all offer a similar gaming experience. This one is very popular and stands out with its compact design and up-to-date specifications. Previous models had their share of software problems. These devices often used outdated Android joysticks, resulting in limited power and performance. However, the M8 aims to solve these problems and provide a smoother gaming experience. With its updated hardware and software, it promises to offer better performance and compatibility. And to achieve this, it has 256 megabytes of RAM and a maximum flash of 128 megabytes. Although the RAM may seem low compared to other devices, it manages to offer a variety of game compatibility. The device comes with a 64GB flash card, although there is a 32GB version, providing ample storage for games and files. With its HDMI output, gamers can easily connect it to their TV and enjoy games on a larger screen. Inside the package, you will find the game stick itself, two PlayStation imitation controllers, a 64 storage flash card, an HDMI extension cable and a micro USB cable to power the device. The quality of the controls seems very good, guaranteeing a comfortable gaming experience. The inclusion of an HDMI extension cable is essential due to the thickness of the device, which could obstruct a second port. The joystick comes with two controllers, both of which require two AA batteries. The controls feature good build quality and responsive joystick controls. The absence of any notable connectivity issues makes for an immersive gaming experience. However, it would have been more convenient if the controllers were rechargeable instead of relying on batteries. In addition to the controllers, an HDMI extension cable and various GIFs are included. The HDMI extension cable is necessary due to the thickness of the device, allowing easy connection to the TV. The package also includes an HDI extension cable, giving you flexibility in positioning the joystick. With the micro USB cable, you can easily connect the device. Compared to previous models, the M8 has a different but similar design. Instead of a basic Android TV stick, this device has its own branding and a dedicated interface. This design choice gives it a more polished look and feel. However, the thickness of the stick can be a disadvantage, blocking access to other ports on your TV. The inclusion of an HDMI extension cable solves this problem. The menu interface is similar to other devices on the market. It offers a variety of options including class, history, collection, favorites, and a search function. The device supports various game systems including Famicom, Game Boy, Mega Drive, Super Famicom, PlayStation, and Atari. The settings menu allows customization with options such as changing the keyring, viewing local files and accessing system information. One of the essential aspects of any gaming device is how well it runs games. 
The M8 performs decently in this area. It provides a smooth gaming experience with minimal hiccups, especially when playing classic games. However, when it comes to running PlayStation 1 games, some minor performance issues were noticed. Overall, games run well, but there is room for improvement. Here we're talking about a device that has a dual-core Cortex, a 7 CPU, so we're not going to see a lot of magic here, but let's break it down. So you'll get the Mario games, like the world version, and it runs very well, with no input lag on the controller and it runs very smoothly. It's good to use the HDMI extender so that the signal is directed to the controller. Regarding the delay, when you press start or select, where you save the current state of the game, there is a slight delay in the game interface itself, in the list of games, Super Mario World 2 or Yoshi Island, which would normally choke or have distorted music, can run well on this console. The classic Donkey Kong has inverted controls, but this can be configured by remapping and there are several videos on the internet about this. Then some main games can happen. As for the Super Nintendo, all is well with the vast majority of games. Moving on to the PlayStation 1 and considering its processor, some games may choke. Looking at Dragon Ball, which was already slow and let's face it, this game has aged badly and is running at a low FPS. The game was already slow by nature but here it seems slower to me. Switching to the Crash game, the FPS is close to 20, but it's still running. I'd expect that of course. But the game is good for nostalgia although the FPS variation is clear. 3D games are bound to experience this. Looking at arcade games, many games come as standard and I tested Metal Slug with infinite chips, which makes it very easy and the performance is very smooth, with no crashes, slowdowns or FPS drops. 2D games do very well here. Cough runs well, smoothly, although there are some graphical problems with the character's shadow and everything else, but it's totally playable. Dragon Ball Z2 didn't even open, but with a long list of games, this can happen. Let's move on to the Atari. Plenty of games here. Regarding Pac-Man, which I imagine is one of the worst ports here, I thought it was a bug with the ghost multiplying, but I imagine it's normal behavior. Now on to the Game Boy. On the GBA, the Pokemon game, the audio chokes a bit. It sounds grainy, but just turn the sound down a bit and it's fine. Dragon Ball also has the same audio problem, but the game itself runs smoothly. As for the classic Game Boy, this game runs on anything these days so there won't be any problems. The Nintendo 8-bit is also fine, obviously with light games. The Sega Genesis is also capable of running smoothly and fluidly. Here you can play on the D-pad or on the analog pad. The sound works well here. So although this version can handle PlayStation 1 games, it does struggle at times. Some games may feature unstable gameplay and audio, causing a slightly less enjoyable experience. The analog stick and D-pad on the controllers work well, offering precise control during gameplay. However, there were occasional cases of crashes and frame rate drops, especially with more demanding games. In conclusion, the M8 offers a decent gaming experience for its price range. It improves on the problems faced by previous models by providing better hardware and software performance. The device's compact design and included accessories improve the overall user experience. While it may not be perfect, it offers value for money and caters to gamers looking for a budget gaming device. The world of devices is constantly evolving, and the M8 is just one of many offerings. As technology advances, we can expect more powerful and feature-rich devices to enter the market, as happened with the Y7 or Y6. I've already made a video about them. With its compact design, up-to-date specifications and included accessories, it offers value for money. Although there is room for improvement, the M8 caters for gamers on a budget who want a complete gaming solution. It's not the best we've reviewed, but it's worth the money. I'll stop here, gentlemen. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and see you in the next video.